Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos and today I'm talking about my iPhone. Uh, that's my dog Zoe. She's not on the chair today, but some of you ask about her. She's doing great, just not in the chair right now. Anyway, um, I've traveled a lot, taken a lot of photos with my iPhone, and I've just collected those photos. Sometimes I put them on Flickr. Most of the time they just kind of stay on my hard drive. And what I do with them specifically is I dump them into the Photos app on my Mac. And so over the years, I've collected thousands and thousands and thousands of iPhone photos that honestly, I don't really do very much with. And sometimes I come across some of these iPhone photos and I'm like, man, I like that photo. I just wanna edit that photo. And so that's what I'm doing today. I've got an iPhone photo in photos, but the thing I'm gonna do, here's the photo, by the way. The thing I'm gonna do is go over to Pixelmator Pro because it ties in, it is a Mac-centric Mac app, of course. It ties in so beautifully well with photos that Pixelmator Pro is actually causing me to use photos a bit more and making me kind of go back and revisit a lot of these old trips. Hey, it can't really go anywhere. Uh, we're getting closer though. Um, and so many photos, if you look up here, I've got 16,000 photos here in my, I, uh, not iPhoto, it used to be called iPhoto, in my photos library. But what I wanna do is I wanna take this one from, uh, I can't pronounce it, but it's that big lagoon that's well known in um, Iceland and, uh, this was a partial pano, basically. I didn't do a full pano where I went the whole way, but I wanted to get that, that big piece of ice that's kind of the core center of the photo and uh, basically uh, capture that, and so a pano worked best. So what I found is that, honestly, going back into photos, I was like, there's some pretty good tools in here. I had no idea. Honestly, I don't really use that much, but um, I do like to use Pixelmator Pro, and they tie together so well. So First thing you gotta do if you haven't done this already is click on those three dots, click on manage, and go into your extensions and go to photo editing and make sure you check Pixelmator Pro. That is, of course, assuming you have it. If you don't, get it at the link down below. Uh, but then once you've done that, you can just click on that and click on Pixelmator Pro, and you will see that it's a very fast transfer. I didn't even finish my sentence. I'm already in Pixelmator Pro. That's how nicely tied together they are and how quickly these two work in combination. And there's some really cool features that allow you to kind of bounce back and forth and take advantage of some of the key aspects of Pixelmator Pro and some of the key aspects of photos. So let me do a quick edit here. I don't know this is uh, if this is exactly what I want to do, and I'm kind of winging it here, but I see a scene like this. I want to go a little bit bluer. I'm going to go into lightness, and uh, for sure I want some contrast because I want to accentuate some of those darker, uh, kind of the depths of the water to make it look a little richer and darker. I don't know why I did that. I felt like it was necessary. Um, I'm going to actually maybe pull up shadows. I'm going to uh, pull the black point a little bit. I'm just creating contrast. If you can't tell, let me show you there's before and after that tool. I'm going to go into hue and saturation, give it a little bit of vibrance uh, just to pop some of that color. And then at the same time, or I guess right after that, I'm going to go into selective color, go into blue, pull the saturation down just a couple of percentage points. I don't want to overdo it. It is blue and uh, it's pretty awesome looking there, but I don't want to overdo it. Um, and I actually think I'm gonna take the brightness of the blue a little bit higher, which is gonna decrease some of that contrast. However, the next tool I'm going into is levels, which I adore, just to be honest. I'm gonna make sure I'm in luminance, so I'm just messing with the light values here. And I'm gonna play around with some of these things, and you can kind of see what I'm doing. This is gonna create a little bit more contrast, and all I ever do is I just experiment with these little sliders and just kind of move them around and kind of see what looks cool to my eye and what I like. I'm gonna leave that top one alone. I'm gonna pull that a little bit. Let me check the deep dark bits. There we go. Maybe something like that. Let me turn this off and see. As I said, I don't have a script here, my friends. I'm kind of playing around with this photo. I know generally what I want to do and I've done it uh, before, similar photos, but just kind of having a play here. I think that looks pretty good overall. There we go, let me get levels back on. Actually, you know what, now that I've uh, turned that back on, that was a little bit too dark. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take brightness up a little bit and maybe something about like that. So now let me click on this down below. You can see the before and the after. I think that looks pretty good, before and after. I think I've got a pretty nice looking photo. Now there's some other tools that I think work really well. The first one here is the, uh, the repair tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna do that over here. And there's a couple of things I noticed that need to be, whoa, I need to be taken care of. And that is uh, this power line over here. So I've zoomed in, I'm gonna go back to repair. And I'm gonna come over here and just wipe over this guy. 
and it pretty much disappears. Do that again. Clean that up just a little bit. And while I've got that, I'm also going to come over here and get the reflection because if the power lines are gone, the reflection needs to be gone as well. Now there's a couple other things. I think a little bit there of a power line, that's gone, and a little bit of a power line in the distance over there. And I think I'm gonna pull a few of these little darker, tiny little bits of ice that are floating here in the lagoon and get rid of them as well, just to clean it up a bit. I think I'll leave that there. I think that looks pretty good overall. I'm gonna go back to the hand tool and go back to zoom to fit. And I'm feeling pretty good about this photo. I think that looks nice. I'm gonna click back on color adjustments. And one more time, the before and after. There it is, before and after. So here's one of the cool things where they really tie in together. I'm gonna to click Save Changes, and you're gonna get two options. Save a flat file or preserve edits. If you ever think you might wanna make some adjustments, click preserve edits, because when you do that, it's gonna drop it back into photos. See how quick that is? Um, and there it is, but your edits are preserved, which means you can now go back to Pixelmator Pro and pick up where you left off if you want to. So instead of making edits here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Pixelmator Pro, and once again, you'll see how quick that is. There it is, I didn't even have time to pause, and you can see that all of my edits are still here. So if for some reason I was like, oh, you know what, I really need to do this or that or fix this or that, I can come back in here and do that. And here's one thing I wanna do, and that is I wanna smudge uh, the sky a little bit, uh, soften it basically. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna get a big brush and I'm just gonna smooth that sky a little bit. And you know, I'm just gonna go over this kinda quickly but something about like that. And now if I zoom in and take a look, whoops, that's the text tool, not the hand tool. I kind of thought that looked a little funny. Let me uh, do this, pull in up there, and now go back to softening. And let me do a before and after. If you look at the sky, there it is before and after. It's not a massive difference, but I don't know if you can even tell, to be honest. I can tell, but it's not a massive difference. But just uh, zoom to fit. That's just something I might would wanna do. I might think about later, for example, or sharpening. You can do the same thing. We can come in with sharpening, but I'm not gonna use sharpening, and that is because what I have found is that I actually like to add the definition back in photos. So once again, I'm gonna click Save Changes and Preserve Edits, go back into Photos, and here they have this definition slider, and I'm gonna go ahead and just bump that up a little bit because I find that that makes a little bit more impact on the photo than the sharpening slider in Pixelmator Pro. I have to really do a lot to get much of an, a visual impact with the sharpening slider that I was showing you, the sharpening brush in Pixelmator Pro. But um, I feel like here sliding this definition is kind of like a little bit like clarity, a little bit like structure, and I think has a nice impact visually on the photo. So if I turn this off, there it is before that uh, definition adjustment, and there it is after. Just be careful because of course the further you go, the crunchier it gets, and you know, depending on what look you're going for, you just probably wanna be careful with a slider like that. But I like that slider. I think that works really well. Made my other edits over in Pixelmator Pro, made these edits here, or this edit, I guess, with definition here in Photos. And I think that's looking pretty sweet, to be honest. I like the look of that, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click Done, and I'm now finished. This is one of my favorite photos from Iceland. And honestly, I just went like this, like iPhone, and just did a little pano. Uh, and it's not even a full pano. As you can see, it's not really long. I kind of just did, it's like a half pano or a partial pano. I don't know what the term is, but one of my favorite photos from Iceland. And honestly, I think it looks pretty sweet. I want to um, maybe get that printed. I need a better printer or I need to find a good print house. But um, that's something that I would put on the wall because I like it that much. But anyway, that's an example of how I'm using photos and Pixelmator Pro together. And using Pixelmator Pro kind of caused me to go to photos. And then when I started using photos and looking at all these iPhone shots, it makes me want to use Pixelmator Pro. So they go together really well. I mean, again, obvious, I'm sure, because Pixelmator Pro is a Mac only or Apple only app. It works so well together. I love it. Anyway, that's a, an example workflow and it's kind of how I'm using the two products together. Hope it gives you some ideas that you can use in your own edits. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back more. Uh, no, I won't. I'll be back soon with more. Talking about this app, Pixel, well, not this app. I'm in photos now. See what I mean? They go together so well, I lose track of the fact that I'm not even in Pixelmator, that I'm in photos. Anyway, I will be back soon with more about Pixelmator Pro, as well as other apps. If you have specific things you want me to cover, let me know. I'll be back soon. You guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Adios.